in a price packet where quad core smartphones are becoming rather popular it is a bit of a surprise and again we kind of agree with the viewpoint of sony that dual core phones are equally capable if you're using them to an extent where you're not actually utilizing quad core processing power which is why sony new flagship phone the xperia iron also has a dual core processor Sony believes that the quad-core processor won't really make too much of an effect because there are hardly any apps that use the quad-core capabilities. Plus, for most users, that much processing power is actually an overkill. Whether that is true or not for you in your user scenario, that's up to you to decide. However, this particular phone is the latest on the Sony uh, brand. Comes with the same processor as we saw on the Xperia S, which is a 1.5 GHz dual-core. It has the Adreno 220 graphics, 1 gig of RAM to support that. Incidentally, this phone has lesser internal storage than the Xperia S. Uh, the user will get about 13 gigs of internal storage, but there's a memory card slot which the predecessor did not have. Let's run you through how this phone looks, how this phone feels, and how is it different to its predecessor and how it kind of compares to the rival. This phone is slightly bigger than the Xperia S because it has a slightly bigger display. This is a 4.55 inch display. Very traditional looking in the front. Gone is the transparent little strip that we saw on the Xperia S as well as the unique keys that we saw, the touch keys. This one's very, very conventional. There's the display, the front facing camera and four touch sensitive keys. Some people, we've, we've read on certain forums as well as we've got feedback from certain readers that these front keys don't really respond well. However, till now we have not faced any issues with the response of these keys. So that could probably either be an isolated issue or an issue with the handset. You could probably get that checked out at the service center. However, the unit we've received has faced absolutely no issues in terms of key response. Switching the phone over to this side, this has the power key here, the volume locker, as well as the dedicated camera key. On this side is the very, very well done port for HDMI as well as the micro USB. The only, only little niggle that we feel with this particular thing is if you're keeping this phone flat on the ground and you have the charger plugged in, then the, the flap really doesn't have any space to go. So that could be a bit of a risk to its uh, long term happiness, if you may say that. The way this was implemented on the predecessor, the Xperia S was rather unique. It was coming out of the side and you could probably twist it nicely to one side, it would stay safely there. You could plug in the charger, charge the phone, plug out the charger and slide that back in. This one will probably, you'll probably have to be a little more careful with this. On the back, this one does not have the rubberized finish, instead it has a flush metal finish, a dual tone here. The red color looks pretty nice. We think the crimson red looks good on this phone matched with the black. The color incidentally spills over to the two side spines. Um, that's, that's a pretty good touch, pretty nifty touch. We like the overall look of the phone. While it may not have the rubberized finish of the predecessor the Xperia S, it's slightly better to hold than let's say the HTC One X because Quite frankly, I did not like the One X build quality personally, uh, particularly after we saw the Galaxy S3's enamel finish at the back. It, it felt a little better to hold, even though there are a lot of people who criticize the Galaxy S3 for that, that's for another debate. However, for this phone, the build quality completely justifies the price. Speaking of which, the price for this phone is, the box price is around 37,000 rupees. Something that we don't really understand is why price this phone in this particular price bracket when you have a lot of quad core processor powered phones fighting for the same uh, demographic. Now you have the HTC One X as well as the Galaxy S3 in the same price, for relatively the same price. The Galaxy S3 is now again available for about 37, 38 in the market. The One X is available for about 35, 36. So this slot right in the middle of that. With the same processor as we've seen on the Xperia S, which is now retailing in the market for about 28 29 So this technically is about seven to 8,000 rupees more expensive with only a slightly bigger display. If you're talking about the OS, the Xperia S now has received the Android IPS update. 
This one comes with IP card of the box, so there is nothing unique there also. Something that we've not been able to figure out, maybe you can. Running you through the uh, software bit of this phone, you have the horizontal scrolling for the apps. We like the range of widgets which has increased after the ICS update on Sony phones, but it's still lagging behind the HTC Sense in the in terms of the sheer variety of widgets. But for example, we really like certain widgets on the HTC Sense, for example, the clock and the integrated weather widget is one. Social networking widgets are definitely better on the Sense and even better on the UI that Samsung has. The Xperia Iron has a very simple LED display. Now, this is surprising, again brings us back to the price versus the rivals game. The Samsung Galaxy S3 has a Super AMOLED display, which is much better in terms of vividness as well as color richness. The HTC One X has a Super IPS LCD 2 display, which is very close to the Super AMOLED in terms of color vividness, while it may not be as crisp. This one incidentally, for no fault of its own, really lacks behind the two. It has the crispness, but it really loses out in terms of color richness. You will you will see this when you use the phone. You will see this when you use the phone with the Galaxy S3 and the One X side by side. Now, natively the display is quite bright, as you would see here. But surprisingly, Sam, uh, Sony has done away with the automatic brightness feature. They did not have that even in the Xperia S. They don't have it now, which is a bit of a surprise. At full brightness, this will be more than sufficient if you're using it outside in bright sunlight or if you're using it indoors. Indoors, we prefer it at about 50% like we had it before we started changing the brightness on this one. Slightly reflective display, as you can see, but with the adequate brightness helping it along, you should not have any problems at all.